to train your DJ. <laughs> that's that's clever. How to train your DJ in 30 days. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to describe what I learned in 30 days of DJing, and then next week's video is going to be the progress video for it. My name's Moog. Let's just dive right into it. First things first, I had to learn what all of the buttons did. The hardest ones for me were all of the loop buttons up here, beat syncing, uh, learning when to use EQs, as well as our effects panel and how it lined up with our record box software. Once you have a basic understanding of what you're doing here and here, then you can start getting better at learning how to DJ. The next thing I really wanted to learn was transitions, at least somewhat decently. By far the most important part of transitioning is song structure. Oh, sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. As you can see, on songs like TMA here, I have my color-coded hot cue system that I use to signify if there's a drop or a breakdown, just places where I can mix in or out of to make my transitions more effective if so I don't miss any song changes or effects or whatever else. It's especially good if you don't remember a song or if you have a hard time remembering one like I do. I'll go through all of these eventually to set my hot cues so I can just load up a track, see my color coded system, and I'll know where to mix it, how to mix it, etc. My favorite transition to date is using the low pass filter, cutting the lows and then a little bit of the mids, and then slowly bringing that next song in. So as you can see there, I was slowly bringing back in my filter as well as the mids of this song while slowly reducing the mids of the first song. And then right at the end there, I switched over the bass, the lows, I guess you could say, you should say, to make a nice seamless transition into Tom Riddle. And I think that one was pretty good actually, so pretty happy with that one. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned it, but the reason I wanted to start DJing in the first place is because I have two friends. That's all I have is two friends. <laughs> One of my friends DJs at festivals and things like that, so seeing him do- <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do that. Anyway, he DJs at festivals and conventions and things, so seeing him do that, I was like, wow, that's really cool. I want to do that too. And then my second friend, who's really good at music production, sound design stuff, that's why I'm starting the, pro the producing section of everything. So those are the two main influences of why I wanted to start DJing and producing music, electronically that is. But when I asked my DJ friend for help and he said, he gave me a couple of tips. First, you have to be mixing in key. And he says, mixing in key is this, boom. This is called the Camelot system for mixing in key. Basically, the circle of fifths, you see you have a C, G, C, G, D, A. We talk, I talked about this in the music theory video, circle of fifths, if you haven't seen that, check it out but it's just a circle of fifths on its side here. What this signifies, let's take our example here we just used, we went from A minor to E minor, right? I think that's what we did. Yeah, A minor to E minor. So you can see here that A minor to E minor, that is sonically pretty good, right? We can, it's pleasing to the ear, it's not gonna cause any dissonance with us. If I went from like A minor to E flat minor, that's gonna cause a, the audience is gonna be like, what the f is going on here, right? For the most part, you want to stay either one number up or one number down as one as one letter change. So you want to go adjacent to the key you're in. You don't want to go skipping all over the place. That's the whole key notation. That's the whole premise of the Camelot system here. To stay in the musical key so you can stay consonants. It sounds pleasing and it doesn't take your audience for a loop. I also want to take a moment to make a quick note on beat matching and stuff like that. Most decks have a beat sync functionality. One of the traps that I got caught in at the beginning was some people say, oh, beat syncing 
makes you lesser of a DJ. And that's just simply not true, so don't believe any of that. Beat Sync is there for a reason. If if you need it, if you want to use it, it's a it's a time-saving feature. As long as it sounds good. If it sounds good, that's all that matters, especially to an audience or whatever else. I still wanted to learn how to beat match by ear. The trick I used, and hopefully this will help some people that may not have as easy of a time, I would put a song on YouTube. Can't play any of those here because that's copyright. And then I would take like a simple drum track or something, put it in record box, and I would match the BPMs. Obviously you can manipulate the one in record box with your tempo sliders here. At first that started off pretty slow for me because it's kind of hard to listen in for exact BPM, but you can get it really close by doing that, especially at certain parts of songs where there is a lot of percussion, percussion going on that can keep a nice steady beat for you to beat match to. Finally, I wanted to discuss some resources that you can use to further your growth as a DJ. DJ Carlo here, I know he has a beginner course. I never bought it, but it's so I can't really say if it's good or bad or anything, but a lot of his videos are pretty helpful. Like he'll break down some mixes that people are doing. He'll give you some quick tips and tricks and things. DJ Tech Tools here. Some of their stuff is kind of old. Might not be the most video quality thing to watch, but the the content is still good about how to DJ and stuff. So I use them sometimes. I personally use D Digital DJ Tips and Crossfader. Both of those resources kind of helped me break through the first 30 days here and hopefully farther beyond that. Basically though, there is a lot of awesome information out there from Digital DJ Tips, DJ Tech Tools, Carlo, and a bunch of other crossfader, any other DJ YouTubers I guess, DJ, DJ Tubers? I don't know. <laughs> that can really help you progress through your journey. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I'm going to continually keep updating you all on my my progress as a DJ as well. Sometimes we stream it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2.30 Central Standard Time on Twitch. I'll do some DJ streams there to see, to just practice, have some fun, do some requesting, all that fun stuff. If you did like this video, please make sure to subscribe with the bell icon on. We got a lot of cool stuff planned in the next month and beyond, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Also be sure to comment all of your thoughts below. Did I miss anything? What do you think is the most important thing for a DJ to learn? Again, next week is going to be the second part of our actual DJ progression video. So stay tuned for that. For now, though, I want to thank you guys again. I want you to keep making beautiful music, and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one, guys. We're just going to do my tasks, you know. We're just doing some tasks. Don't mind me. Oh, I got one in medbay. Oh, this is bad. I shouldn't have went to medbay first. I missed you guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call him and uh it's Mogul. Wow! I, what? I straight up just him fake uh fake med skin. A few moments later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice call imposter. Great.